really professionally I would say um, eight years ago like 2011 um, but then way back when I was in grade school I remember that uh, I was the only one taking photos of my classmates if you have any Christmas party since I was grade five until high school and until when I took the university I'm the only one taking photos of everything everything did i say everything <laughs> everything so yeah um just to give you some uh, a sample like i brought my old fashioned camera um basically it's a canon camera it's since 1995 model it's using a film and i still have it with me and it's um it's have a sentimental value for me that's why i didn't sell it i uh, keep it with me this is where i start everything from um from my photography when i was in grade school and then I, until I turned into a more digital, you know, big size camera that um, currently I'm using right now. And then, yeah, professionally, um, I'm doing a lot of portraits um, because I love like challenge. So I started doing um, um, studio photography, which is it's tough because you're making your own lights um, and Compare that if you're shooting fashion outdoor, you have your lights where you have the sun that you can use, but this one you have no lights on your studio strobe lights, so that's where I started. Um, try to learn for self taught only, YouTube University guys. <laughs> that's where I started. Yeah, and then in six months, try to learn. Um, there are obstacles that I encountered, like I almost gave up, put my camera in the closet, and then one day, I saw one of the photo again of one of my friends and they took a shot of uh, our very own science world as always photographers, uh, starter kit. Um, yeah, and then I took out my camera again, tried to uh, learn. I said, okay, I'm gonna start from base and see if um, I can make it work. And that time I was thinking of upgrading after I've learned from my first, um, uh, from, from my very first DSLR camera. So it's so hard to find model especially if you're building portfolio you will get a lot of um, rejections which is um, it's very common you know especially when you're starting and so so hard to establish until then i i'm very thankful with this model that i would be mentioning um, uh, her name is carmela uh, she's filipina and uh, that time i was looking at the mod model and then she she got you know, she, she got interested and then after that, it was so fortunate that I get a lot of likes in Facebook, you know, in OC social media. They like my photo from that set. And then from there, I got recognized. Um, there are some people that helped me. I have um, attended a lot of photo workshop locally in Vancouver those days. There was, uh, I think that was like year 2013 when, when I attended um, the workshop of, um, of William or Suwa. It's the, uh, uh, by, um, by Soulmate Production, um, there was the, uh, um, what's his name? Um, oh, Dwayne, Dwayne Girvan, so that's his name. So he was really good in uh, lighting. So I was very, very interested to attend that, that workshop because lighting is the key in photography and that's what I wanna really learn from. So I can shoot anywhere, anytime, you know, any settings, and then after that, another workshop happened. Um, it was hosted again with the same production uh, with Willa Morsua. And then um, this is all about posing, how you make your subject or your, your, your uh, model pose in different genre. So fashion, editorial, corporate, it's t taught you how to do all of those stuff in just one day. One of my really good journeys when I went to Philippines to attend a uh, four days workshop. So here it goes. See, this is the exciting part because it was four days only. I was there for four days. I flew back to the Philippines on January, oh, December 31st. So I didn't spend New Year. 
because 31st here when I get to the Philippines is January 2nd already <laughs> so I was there I, I landed in the Philippines all the way and then I didn't have been sleep yet in my uh, in my trip and all the way I went to the workshop so basically the workshop is um, it's all about how you make your shot artistic in a way so um, if you if you heard about um, the the maestro in the Philippines, our national artist, Amor Solo. The, this workshop is all about Amor Solesque. So Amor Solesque is a, it's a kind of, a, a kind of um, you know, it's a fantasy. It's like a painting, but it's been shot in your camera. So how is that gonna work? So the editing is very intensive. Uh, when, I, when I thought of doing that, it was so hard because you're gonna think of how the post process would look like after you take a shot. I was very inspired by uh, Miss uh, um, Miss uh, Marie Chris uh, Fabi. She was the uh, my mentor in the Philippines that taught me this kind of technique. There's another national artist that I got um, um, very inspired from my journey. Um, his name is um, Manny Lebrudo. So Manny Lebrudo is a national artist that it's really good when it comes to all the concept of different um, nationalities and. Um, I'm so fortunate to be part of uh, one of their um, um, sponsored workshops that I, they've done in the Iloilo, Philippines. And uh, also with RR Production, which is uh, Ryan Rivera. He is very nice, very, you know, very down to earth. And even when I came back in Canada, they were like, you know, my, their support still there. We're doing Skype conference just to learn from each other. They are very successful in the Philippines. They have their own production. They are you know, producing a lot of weddings, you know, debut and a lot of different um, events, then still they never forget, you know, what we have, what we have done before. After that, I came back to the, I came back to Canada and then tried to find my, um, my style. I got also inspired with one of the, our local photographer in, in, in Vancouver. His name is Franz Morso. He's a landscape photographer. Um, he got his own um, gallery in Granville and also in Squamish and he, he taught me, he, he really like invests his time with me. I was so fortunate that all of the photographers that he had known in Canada, in Vancouver, he taught me a lot from the equipment to the style for the post processing. We've been like, I've been spending time with him overnight, even four o'clock in the morning, I was in his place doing all of the stuff. We're shooting overnight at night and then we actually went out for, for a safari. We, went out of town, out of Canada, just to practice the skills. Yeah, he's even lending me his equipment, like his filter, his tripod. Just, hey, do this, learn from here. So he's very strict, but you know, you're gonna learn. So, and then from there, I got inspired with landscape. So I really get into now to a landscape. I'm shooting a lot of different places, you know, around the world with uh, just landscape photography, all the really iconic places. And then they brought in another artist from the Philippines, uh, to teach a proper landscape photography. This is the Canon ambassador, Edwin Martinez. So he's a Filipino. He, he normally travel here all the time just to teach landscape, uh, landscape um, you know, technique. And then from there, all of those big pieces from landscape, from this uh, Edwin Martinez, from Franz Morso, from Mario Chris Fabi, from Manny Rubudo, from Ryan you know, Rivera, and from Dwayne made my style, I would say. very thankful for this fashion designer that noticed my work. Her name is Darlene Karimi, a um, fashion designer that um, discovered my talent, my work. She's the one who's involved me in a magazine. And I was so surprised she was saying, oh, you have a good eye. I like your style. Let's collaborate. And I was saying, well, let's try. I, I'm, I've never been to collaborate and shoot with fashion it's not like a big team right my first magazine I got published this is looking uh, this is uh, based in um, Milan Milan right um, Blavish magazine um, I have one of my co-photographer as well that uh, helped me without him of course um, this this photo shoot and would not not be uh, possible 
So, yeah, and then, um, so basically, um, we have a big team on this magazine, and um, one of the very nice photographer that owns this magazine I was introduced with him. He always gave me encouragement, you know, to improve myself. You know, photographers should help each other up. You know, he wants me to improve. He wants me to be like unique from other photographers. So this magazine um, is uh, one of my pieces here. So basically, um, it was a couple shoot that I've done. Uh, it's so hard because you have to get a couple that can work together. Um, sometimes most of the models, they, they kind of hesitate to work with a partner, but this one, I, we made it it's very successful. So thank you for, uh, for, for you know, believing, for trusting me, uh, Darlene, our, our, um, our um, uh, fashion designer. And you know, when, when that magazine came out at first, um, I was also messaged by one of our um, um, Miss Universe um, um, Canada finalists uh, those days when I was a photographer of the event for the past five years, five consecutive years. And Laura Guzman, she is uh, a friend of mine and she um, got a cover, my first ever cover uh, page magazine in local Vancouver, which is, I'm so fortunate that, you know, I was so happy. And yeah, this one is like 2011 and it's uh, so old already. <laughs> it's very precious, that's why I keep it, right? Uh, imagine, right? Um, you would get, after the magazine, there would be another one that you're gonna surprise that it's a front page again. Guess what? It's Rhea. Imagine, guys. Front page of Canadian Immigration Magazine, right? In Canada, you have the front page. And I was so surprised when I was running in a public rivalry just to get a couple of this magazine. I sneak out from work just to get this, <laughs> right? So I was so happy, you know, seeing everything when they get started it. Uh, I was part of the, uh, one of the, um, um, one of the, first photographer of the every, I think, and I was so fortunate to be part of it. And I didn't expect that along the way of my photography from that time that I've learned and I met Rhea and the family, until now I'm still part of it. So I'm still with them, no matter what, all the, uh, the concerts, the events, um, pretty much I, I have all of the support every time that they have gigs, you know. And recently, like uh, an hour ago, we just did a photo shoot for the cover of the album of Rhea that's coming out soon. So it's gonna be exciting, guys. And guess what? I even still have their, you know, wall of star way back 2016, right? So I really keep, you know, all memorables that I got from, you know, my journey in my photography. Uh, I got cover magazine as well. It's my photo. It's very, very nice from Surreal Magazine. Thank you, Caddy Richards, the CEO and president of the magazine. Thank you for trusting my work, our work, our teamwork. Thank you. Um, yeah, and then we had an interview, I remember. Um, I was shocked when, when the, the president sent me an email saying they want us to get interview featured in a magazine. So basically, I have an interview here with our model, Sakura Rashidi. And of course, I want to thank you, the, our fashion designer, you know, Cheyenne Omtran and also our makeup artist, Sydney Wallen, of course. And thank you for trusting me as your photographer. That time I know I was so busy. I'm so busy in my weddings, but then I said, I'm gonna promise, I'm gonna try to squeeze in, you know, we've done six outfits for one and a half hour, which is pretty good. Um, yeah, and this one, and then the next page, well, look at that, right? It's so hard to, you know, to, to think of this kind of concepts and how to make story you know, in the uh, Tulip Festival those days. So we got so many outfits that we've done. So yeah, and then um, this magazine is um, Trend Tribe magazine. Um, people would say that I get only published fashion portrait, you know, um, models, right? Editorial, and guess what? I have landscapes. These are landscapes of 
Vancouver, BC. I have also Seattle that has been covered by this magazine. So it's a, a lifestyle editorial. This one is shot. Um, anyone recognize Seattle, right? So I have this in um, the Alex Fraser Bridge. Um, this one is the Washington Mount Baker. And guess what? Very quick, British Columbia, we have Aurora Borealis, right? We have people who said you cannot see Northern Lights in BC, and guess what? This is Vancouver. <laughs> this is 45 minutes away from downtown Vancouver. It's very quick. So, and then I got a shot here with, uh, in Banff, Moraine Lake. So I have my mentor shooting here with me, uh, Franz Morso. And then also with Jones Lake. This is very memorable to me, Jones Lake, because that time I was just starting and then I was, um, I was with uh, Franz Morso, and he was teaching me right beside him, shooting Jones Lake. And we were there like four o'clock in the morning just to take a photo of sunrise of this place. And then I have Herbert Lake in Alberta. I was with Franz Morso as well. And then Deer Lake, Burnaby. Who would notice that this is Deer Lake? So we pretty much I have covered a lot of different genre in, in photography. So what's next? You know, I have a question in my mind, like, what's next after I've known my style? How can I, how can I show to the world that this is me? This is my name, right? That I've uh, been, you know, that I've, that I've been trying to improve for the past few years. So I thought of, okay, let's, let me try to get into involved with magazine and see if these people around the world, Europe, Singapore, Australia, Malaysia, Canada, US, anywhere in the world, if they're gonna like my photo. Um, there's a lot of magazine that they will reject you, which is very common. And because, and not because they don't like your photos. Always don't, don't think that they don't like your photos. It's because every time, every magazine that they have released, they always like look for a certain look a certain concept, a certain theme, theme, right? That will fit on the release. You cannot just say that, okay, this release is gonna be like magazine, is gonna be all fashion editorial, and suddenly you will throw a concept of bikini, which is, you know, it's fashion editorial, right? So this, there are like instances that they would be looking at the concept first before they get accepted. So you have to be careful of bringing the team in before you do a photo shoot. You have to make sure that you know what you're trying to portray, what is the story of your photos. You know, it's hard because, you know, in video, you can just say, you know, something on your audience to deliver the message. So that's the challenge. How, you, how do you send a message to your audience through your model, to the action, to the facial expression, through the angle, all of those lighting, the mood, all of those combine all together to say to the audience, this is the story of my magazine. Don't give up because, you know, they, that's how you learn. You learn from your mistake, right? So if they say, oh, you've been rejected this set all the time, then what's wrong, right? So you have to think of what am I missing in this set? Maybe it's missing another piece of story, another piece of photo that it's plugged in, it should be all good, right? So those kind of stuff. And also you have to look at the quality of what they are producing. Normally magazine, they would um, give you sample shots, like a mood board that they call, and then try to incorporate that in your, 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 your next project or your next shoot. So at least even the editing style, sometimes magazine, they don't do a lot of editing. So you make sure that your, 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 your shot is good enough already out from the camera. around what quality you would get with diff um, same settings with same power of the light but different diffusers you want dramatic sure you can have this light everything on you without the flash and you can make a dramatic shot but if you want to make a glamour shot then you can have the flash use this one so with the flash using it you can put it back all of this stuff and then your grid to make it soft How confident are you giving your photo out from the camera without editing, 
right? Those days when I was using this old fashioned camera that I got, I just gonna print the negative and then that's it. I don't have to do the editing. Now we have the digital SLR and like, you know, it's, you can see right away, right? So how confident are you giving your, your photos or showing your photos right from the camera? So that's one. Second is of course, um, the lighting technique. When you do the video, you need lights. That's why we have light here, left and right, right? And you do outside, you shoot outside, you have the sun, right? How confident are you shooting outside regardless of your camera that you're using just the sunlight outside? What is the proper equipment that you can use to overcome the sun, overpower the sun, sorry, overpower the sun, right? So we've discussed this throughout when we had this workshop last, uh, last year, our, um, our Lightning 101. Um, and then third, lastly, is um, how do you make really a good composition? What are elements that you need to consider when shooting portrait, right? Of course, there's a lot of elements, like there's a lot of posing style, right? There's a lot of angles, there's a lot of, you know, you bending, right? It makes a difference when it comes to just moving your hand, bend your shoulder like this, right? And then looking away, right? So, and then versus against looking at the camera and then just going straight. So, okay, one shot, look away. Yeah, there you go, you read my mind. One shot, hold that pose. Closer, yeah, that's it, hold that pose. Ready, one, two, wow. studio in the future like you know like very own my own studio I would say not me renting a studio um, yeah who knows uh, maybe my name would be there um, somewhere that you can see but we'll find out <laughs> don't criticize always encourage because you know in photography there's no right and wrong there is no there, there is a um, there is no rule but there there are guidelines. Art is an art. There's no right and wrong. You can, you know, express your, your inner feelings, your expression through art. And a lot of artists are struggling with that because they thought that their, their piece of art was criticized or people don't like it. That's why they don't, they don't get a good feedback from, from audience. But then it doesn't mean that they don't like it. It's, Maybe the interpretation is different. So for me, as because I work as a full-time um, software engineer, and for me to express my feelings is through photography, like all my photos. Because of course, how do you express as an engineer coding a computer codes to, to to the public, right? No one's gonna understand a one and zero bytes, right? <laughs> Only the photos. And of course, photos still con contain consist of bytes, bits and bytes, your photos, right? It's all, uh, al photo, uh, it's still a computer algorithm. So yeah, so for me, it's always encourage people. This is how they express what they want to the public and just keep doing it, keep improving, find your style and you take it from there. Yes. <laughs>